Indianapolis, AP, LeBron James has been in this playoff position before, just not in the first round. With Cleveland down 2-1 to the Indiana Pacers in the first round, James was asked if Game 4 in Indianapolis Sunday was a must-win. It's the postseason, said James, who is 10-0 in his career in first-round playoff series with Cleveland and Miami. Every game is a must-win. You want to come in and play well and win no matter what. No matter if you have home court advantage or if you're starting on the road, that's the mindset you have to have. I felt like, Friday, was a must-win. We didn't win, obviously, but it's the same mindset on Sunday. James, who scored 28 points, grabbed 12 rebounds and delivered 8 assists in a 92-90 road loss Friday night rejected what he felt were reporters' attempts to ask if the other players needed to do more. You guys think I'm going to throw my teammates under the bus? I'm not about that, James said. Guys just, we have to be better, including myself, had six turnovers, Friday. I was horrible in the third quarter, couldn't make a shot. If I had made some better plays in the third quarter, the lead doesn't skip. The Pacers cut a 17-point halftime deficit to 6 points in the third quarter and finally took their first lead in the fourth quarter. We know we all gotta play better as a collective group, no matter who it is, James said. We got production to start the game and in the second half there wasn't much production. We still had a chance to win. We've got to regroup and figure how we can be better in Game 4. Cleveland coach Teron Liu said the Cavaliers were limited because George Hill's back locked up in the second half. Hill played only nine minutes in the second half, scoring two of his 13 points. Liu used James and Jordan Clarkson rather than backup point guard Jose Calderon in the fourth quarter. If Hill can't go Sunday, Liu said he will likely start Calderon. Hill had an MRI on Saturday, but the results weren't back. He is listed as questionable for Game 4 with back spasms. Hill was hurt during Game 1 when Trevor Booker set a back screen and felt stiffness before Game 2, but played 20 minutes. For the Pacers, Boyan Bogdanovich was the difference maker, scoring 15 of his team high 30 points in the fourth quarter. Bogdanovich struggled shooting the first two games of the series. Bogdanovich, who made seven of nine three pointers, kept his focus after two quick fouls in the first quarter and had to leave briefly in the fourth when he picked up his fifth foul. The seven three-pointers tied a franchise playoff record, also held by Reggie Miller twice, Chuck Burson and Paul George. I thought it was going to be another poor performance from myself, but in the second half I started hitting shots and started feeling, much, better and I think it did a great job. Friday night, the Croatian forward said, Bogdanovic said he was most pleased with his defense against James. Everybody thought before this season that I cannot play defense. He said, I don't say that I am playing great defense, but I am working hard at trying to make it tough for each offensive player that I am guarding. Bogdanovic said he tries to push James so he catches the ball far from the basket. Against those type of players you just try to stay aggressive on them, Bogdanovic said. Pacers coach Nate McMillan was impressed with his ability to produce both ways. You're taking a pounding if you're on the defensive end of the floor if you're guarding LeBron. McMillan said. But offensively he found some energy. He got some good looks and he knocked them down. The Pacers came back to win eight times during the regular season after being down 15 or more points. We've been resilient, guard Victor Aladipo said. We made an adjustment in the second half and it helped us. But it's only one game. I'm looking forward to Sunday. Although the San Antonio Spurs were outmatched against the Golden State Warriors, Manu Ginobili was an integral part of the Spurs staving off elimination against the reigning champs on Sunday. San Antonio beat the Warriors, 103-90, to put the series at 3-1. The 40-year-old wingman scored 10 of his 16 points in the fourth quarter in San Antonio as Ettore Messina logged a playoff win at the helm of the team. Greg Popovich, who sadly lost his wife this past week, did not coach. Ginobili was 5 of 10 off the bench adding five assists and three rebounds in the win. Law Marcus Aldridge led all Spurs scorers with 22, notching a double-double with 10 rebounds. Meanwhile, the only Warriors player to score more than 12 points was Kevin Durant, 
who rose above all scorers with 34 points to go with 13 rebounds. Clay Thompson shot an embarrassing 25% from the field scoring just 12 points, Ginobili put the dagger on the Warriors with 90 seconds to go, hitting a spinning flip shot over Draymond Green to give San Antonio a 10-point lead. The series heads back to Oakland for Game 5 with the Spurs trailing, 3-1. Kevin Durant was once the big star in a little city. The former Oklahoma City Thunder star now plays for the Golden State Warriors and has a championship ring to his name after making a switch in 2016. So Durand has at least some experience similar to that of Milwaukee Bucks star Giannis Antetokounmpo. The Greek freak is currently leading the charge for the Bucks against the Boston Celtics in the first round, and he's seen as the future in Milwaukee. Antetokounmpo signed a four-year, $100 million contract in the summer of 2016, so presumably he'll be in Wisconsin for some time. Meanwhile. Durand had some advice for Antetokounmpo, should he ask for it. In a feature on ESPN, Durant was quoted as saying he felt Antetokounmpo should be sure to have fun, and to play for himself, via ESPN. What I would say to him, I would tell him to play for himself, Durant said. Because he's the one out there putting in the work, he's the one out there getting up in the morning staying committed to the game. Obviously, the comments about staying put. Sounds good to the fans in Milwaukee and to the ownership, because he cares so much about wanting to please them and play well for them, and I get it. But his career is about him, it's about whatever he wants to do and however he feels is right for him, and what type of basketball does he want to play. He's not going to stay in Milwaukee if he's not having fun playing the game. That's some pretty good advice, although factors surrounding Antetokounmpo will likely weigh the same as they did on Durant and OKC. The Bucs presumably need a new coach once their season ends. They're currently helmed by interim coach Joe Prunty, who took over when Jason Kidd was fired earlier this year. The Bucs also need to fill out their roster and find a way to stay healthy. The Thunder famously had roster issues, Reed, the James Harden trade, and eventually the lack of playoff success drove Durant to switch teams. Milwaukee doesn't seem close to that kind of juncture. Although eventually things will flip for the young Bucks and fans and management will expect some kind of production in the postseason. It was an exciting finish in Milwaukee on Sunday, where the Bucks took home a win on their home court to level the series against the Boston Celtics, 2-2. The game came down to the wire, with 2016-17 NBA Rookie of the Year Malcolm Brogdon giving the Bucks the lead after a corner three-pointer with just 33.5 seconds left. The Celtics responded with a sideline out-of-bounds play that resulted in Al Horford tying the game with free throws. On their final possession, the Bucks again went to Brogdon, who missed on a layup driving to the left side of the floor. Luckily, Giannis Antetokounmpo was there to follow with the tip-in with just five seconds left. Via ESPN, Boston was unable to convert on a final play, and Milwaukee grabbed the win. 104-102. Game 5 will be in Boston on Tuesday. The Charlotte Hornets have a new GM and Mitch Kopishok. Upon taking the helm, Kopishok made short work of firing head coach Steve Clifford. Now, the Hornets need a new coach and they have quite a few names to choose from, according to a report from ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski. The Hornets will be interviewing current San Antonio Spurs assistant Sime Udoka and Ettore Messina along with former Memphis Grizzlies head coach David Fisdale. Via Twitter, San Antonio assistant Ime Udoka will interview for the Charlotte Hornets coaching vacancy later this week. League sources tell ESPN, Udoka joins Spurs assistant Ettore Messina and David Fisdale among candidates scheduled to meet Charlotte this week. Adrian Wojnarowski, at Waspn. April 22, 2018 All three have extensive coaching experience under their belts. Udoka played in the NBA for seven seasons and has been an assistant coach in San Antonio since 2012. Messina is a four-time EuroLeague champion as a coach, and a two-time winner of the EuroLeague Coach of the Year award. He's coached abroad and in the U.S. since 1989, and he's been with the Spurs since 2014. Fisdale coached the Grizzlies for two seasons, before that he was a longtime assistant coach with the Miami Heat under Eric Spolstra. Hornets star Kemba Walker said that who the team chose as GM would influence his decision to resign after 2018-19. Walker loved Clifford, 
so who Charlotte picks as coach could carry significant weight with Walker as well.